Hey everybody, AI Sean here. Just wanted to say ahead of this episode that we had some technical difficulties recording this episode. So if some of the audio sounds a little odd, that's why. Now, on with the show. From the banks of Dewey Lake, it's the Dewey Pod Monster. Hey, welcome back. My name is John, and this is the Dewey Podmaster Podcast. This is the weekly podcast about consumption. We're proud members of the You Run Podcast Network. You can, of course, find all of our previous episodes and all of our upcoming episodes at yourunpodcast.com, as well as all the other great shows on the You Run Podcast Network. With me this week is the host of the Dewey Podmaster Podcast. He's seated to my left at the family Thanksgiving table. And Sean, how are you doing today? Pass the gravy. <laughs> And then we have a special guest with us, the Terrifier Queen herself, the host of Pretty Killer Podcast. And is it still Core 4? I know that you have are going through some changes there. What's the new title for the additional project, as well as Creature Features DTF? Yes, I, well, we are now the Terrifying 3 until we regroup and come back fresh for 2025. So, yeah. Hi, well, guys. Glad to have you here, as always. Do you want to... Uh, Hi. Sean's very enthusiastic. Jordana, before we get going on this feast of whatever we're talking about today. Do you want to take a second and tell people where they can find all these great shows that you host? Absolutely. So you can find me and most of these shows on Instagram, X is Questionable, TikTok, and YouTube. We're kind of transitioning because we lost. We got our first bit, RIP Aubrey, wherever you are. Aubrey's now the one who's stalking you. But Aubrey just ghosted us. Like, we have no idea where he is, why he quit. And we just don't know anything. Sounds pretty suspicious. Might be a, might be a motive even. Right. So it might be coming in the sequel. Who knows? So I guess continue to listen and find out what happens. But we're still plugging away. The Chamber of Farts has claimed another victim. As deadly. Sadly, maybe. As long as you're not breathing in there, it's probably fine. Well, this is probably about as official a start to the holiday season as we're going to get. So I'm going to say, since, you know, why not? Sean, what movie are we talking about this week? Thanksgiving. That's right. So we're talking about the movie from, I think it's 2023, maybe 2022, something like that. It came out recently. It is a horror slasher movie called Thanksgiving. This is the brainchild of Eli Roth that was birthed somewhere around 2007 as one of the fake trailers that was in between the Grindhouse movies. But before we get into all that shit, we usually start each and every movie with a third-party review, and this week will be no different. This week, Benton Tarantula, maybe, looks weird, has the second most popular review on Letterboxd, and this person says, this color's not evil, you guys. They just love kitties and hate consumerism. One heart. There's no star rating. I thought you'd do stars on this site, but just one heart. So now that that's out of the way. You might say they had a heart on. Oh, just what we need for this movie. Sean, What's this movie about? Yeah, so for that, we go over to IMDb and we type in the word Thanksgiving, and that brings us to a movie title. And it gets uh, 6.2 out of 10 stars, 64,000 ratings. The popularity is at 270, which is up 13 spots from some number. Don't know what that is. And we go to the storyline on the plot on IMDb. We go to the one on the top. Never know which one's which, but we're going to just start reading it because it's on the top. And if it wasn't important, it wouldn't be on the top. So it says, nah, debatable. After a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy, a mysterious Thanksgiving inspired killer terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts, their birthplace of the infamous holiday. And if we scroll down to the storyline, I guess that makes the top one the plot. It says the exact same thing. After a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy, a mysterious Thanksgiving-inspired killer terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts, the birthplace of the infamous holiday. So usually we start with the guests, but I know a little bit of where Jan- Jordana is coming from on this. So I actually want to start with Sean this time. Sorry, Jordana. Sean, before we get too far into this, is this your first experience with this movie or do you have any preconceived notions with this one? Like, how did you come across the family dinner table that is Thanksgiving? How did I come across it? I came across it because you said, hey, let's do an episode about Thanksgiving. You actually said it last year and it came a little bit too late for for us to actually do an episode about it. I believe the exact phrasing was, fuck you, we're doing ninjas. (laughs) Yeah, I know me. That sounds like something I would say. Yeah. Did you have any opinion of it going in other than that I had wanted to talk about it? Yeah, no, I didn't. You know, I don't watch trailers, so I knew... It was based on a trailer from the Grindhouse movie, but I hadn't seen that trailer either. So, I mean, you know, fresh, totally fresh perspective. Um, innocence, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have any any preconceived anything. Just the poster. Seeing the poster is the only thing I saw. You know, a dude with a mask 
kind of looked like a Guy Fox mask, but John Carver instead. And uh, yeah, that's all I really knew about. It. I didn't know anything else other than Eli Roth. That's it. I will say, if you haven't seen the actual Grindhouse trailer, not the one that came out for the movie, the full thing is on YouTube. It is uncensored, somewhat shockingly. It hasn't been taken down yet. I strongly recommend you go check it out because it actually, I think it helps this movie a lot. But Jordana, we're glad to have you back. What did you think about this movie going into it? How did you discover it? Some of those things leading up before we start breaking down what it is, the plot, all that type of stuff. Well, just like many, I feel like I've been waiting since I saw the trailer for an actual feature length film. I mean, thankfully we got it. And I was super excited because I had a feeling that this was going to regenerate the slasher era, if you will. And I won't give too much away, but I was very pleasantly full with what I was served. So for me, I also found this when I saw the original Grindhouse movie back in theaters, whenever that was. I think it was 2007. I have been reluctantly waiting for this movie for like 15 years. And I say reluctantly because, one, I don't have a lot of faith in Hollywood. And quite frankly, I I don't have a lot of faith in Eli Roth. I think he's a pretty divisive director. I don't think or I don't think that's unfair to say. And I just I didn't know if he was going to deliver a movie that just annoyed me like some of his other films had or if he was going to deliver on the two minute trailer that we got all those years back. So that's kind of how I went into this with cautious optimism, I guess. So lastly, before we start breaking it down, John, who's in this movie? It's a couple people you may have heard of. The, so I'm going to go through the people. I generally go through the people that I recognize. And if there are other people that you recognize, maybe fill me in. But we've got Patrick Dempsey, who plays a sheriff. He's been in lots of stuff. He was probably most notably recently is Dr. McDreamy from Grey's Anatomy. Lots of 80s movies, Can't Buy Me Love. Formerly People's Sexiest Man Alive. We've got Addison Ray, who is an influencer and an actress and I guess a singer and some other things. She plays Gabby. We've got Milo Mannheim, who is Ryan. I know him personally because I have kids that watch this, Disney Zombies. That's where I know him from. He's been in other stuff too. Rick Hoffman, Mr. Right. Uh, he he plays Mr. Right. He's not Mr. Right for me. He mostly starred in Suits. He was in some episodes of Billions. And then we've got Karen, and I don't know how to pronounce this last name. I'm assuming it's, you say it like it looks, cliche. She plays Kathleen. She's been in Saw 4, a bunch of TV shows, Mutant X, Adventure Inc. She was in a new Flash Gordon thing that I didn't even know existed. So that's what she's been in. Anybody you guys recognize? Surprisingly not. I actually went into this thinking it would be more, for lack of a better word, more fan service to the like horror community, like with movies like Machete, which came out of this, even Hobo with a Shotgun and the first two Grindhouse movies. There were a ton of people sprinkled throughout those movies that you would either know as Hollywood regulars that are well past like the B genre level. And I'm thinking of guys like Robert De Niro, Bruce Willis, et cetera. And then there's also a pretty good mix of guys that you would absolutely know from the world of horror, like Tom Sweeney and obviously Rose McGowan. And I, I'm camped. I'm blanking on names right now. So maybe this isn't the best like example. Kurt Russell. Um, I think he's probably past B movie, but for sure, you know, Cindy Poitier, but not that Cindy Poitier, like people like that who were kind of handpicked based off credentials that weren't I don't know why they picked them, I guess, but it seems like they had credentials that really fit into the genre. And I don't really feel like anyone had that in this movie. Doesn't mean they didn't live up to it, but I don't like I don't see a lot of like horror street cred going into this particular film. And we would be remiss to not mention Gina Gershon, who has like a small I wouldn't say it's a cameo, but she has a really small role, pivotal role, important role, but not not a big throughout the movie role. She's in it for the first few minutes. Were you familiar with this cast at all, Jordana? I knew of Addison Rae. Like, I still don't really know who she is, but I, like, knew of her. And, of course, what's the name Kincaid from Scream 3, Patrick Dempsey? It seems like a lot of the cast, this is, like, their first big thing. Other than, you know, obviously the people we mentioned. But, like you said, younger cast, so it seems like a lot of them, this is the thing that they're known for right now. Okay, well, let's start there, because I think this is where we can start kind of getting into it. I don't have a problem with the cast, but I think the majority, I'll just put it out there, and we'll throw a gauntlet to start this. I think the majority of the characters in this movie fucking suck. I think that's fair. This movie, honestly, with the exception of Patrick Dempsey, pretty much everyone in this movie, I kind of watch, I'm like, I'm not going to feel bad at all when you get fucking got, like, by any stretch. And I'm sure that's partially by design. But even, like, I feel like there's a place in a sleazy horror movie to have you kind of like the sleazy characters. Like, I think that's something you're supposed to kind of do. And this movie, you know, Sean's brought this up a bunch of times with, like, Ghostface and with Jason and even with Michael, like you're supposed to root for the bad guy in, in these movies to an extent. 
I like John Carver way more than I like any of these fuckers in this movie. Like, it's not even close. Maybe that's just me. To that point, I think John Carver kind of, like, made a name for himself. Like, I really liked him as a word villain, like his mask and stuff. Obviously, not revealing who John Carver or Carvers is. But I, I like him now. The lead girl, the final girl, I actually, like, enjoyed her compared to the cast. Like, I actually wanted her to, like, succeed and not get like completely butchered but i feel you on like the other rest of the cast but i feel like that was by design i think that patrick dempsey and jessica rather than butcher her name as well i think that her in particular of that group of this young group is well the entire family essentially she's probably the one that has virtue amongst any of these people because the rest of them are all shit bags you know they're all like oh yeah cool people are getting run over and with shopping carts and shit let's film it I'm like what 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 <laughs> Yeah, but she's also the one that enables all that to happen. Not necessarily the riot that ensues, but she's the one that enables them to go in to be able to get the things to record. Like, in a lot of ways, she's kind of the catalyst of how this whole problem starts. Because if she says, no, fuck that, we're not going into my dad's store, and you can't sit there and, like, live stream people looting it and quite literally murdering each other, in theory, none of this happens. I mean, I guess the riot could have still happened, but it doesn't happen to this group of characters. Well, that's true, but I do think that she feels guilty about it, at least. You know, she has some kind of human characteristic. She feels bad about it. She didn't really want to be involved in it. And the rest of the cast just seems like even just the bystanders that are in the riot that, you know, we'll get into it, but they become some key kind of players throughout the movie, too. All the people in this thing are total shitbags. Like consumerism, this first opening scene, well, not the opening scene, but the store scene, the riot scene is like consumerism at its finest. This is like late stage capitalism, <laughs> what you would expect. I don't know. I was going to I wrote it down. Have and either of you guys worked retail for Black Friday? Yep. I worked at Target for five or six years and I worked at a Sam's Club for a while, which isn't technically retail, but it got the same type of crowd. Yeah. Lowe's and I will be experiencing it this year for Ulta, which I'm not excited about. But no, did he pull any of that shit? My story, I'll kick their ass right out. I mean, I worked at Circuit City for multiple years on Black Friday doing warehouse stuff and it was not quite this bad, <laughs> but I could see it being, you know, it, it was it was realistic. It wasn't it was a little over the top. But yeah, I mean, people are nuts. But I feel I feel like it has happened. Oh, for sure. He encapsulated in that scene has happened, obviously not to the extent of the four minute cameo of Gina or whatever her name is, Amanda. But like people are nuts. People are ruthless. They don't give a shit about you. And it's, it's not funny. But it is kind of fucking hilarious. It's funny here. Glad I wasn't there. I don't partake. Do you guys? No. Like I said, I've worked it so many years and I would immediately, you know, you'd start early and go unload trucks for the whole shit. And then, yeah, I was like, I'm done. I'm good. My wife does it, but I all my shopping's online. Yeah. When I was working in Target, I was lucky enough to be a, a backroom employee like Sean. It sounds like unloading trucks and doing stuff like that. So for us, we came out of the back room for like 10 minutes to kind of watch the insanity of them opening the door. So I guess very true to life in that. We weren't recording people that were like hoping for people to die. We just wanted to see like a little bit of like, well, maybe. Well, when I worked at the warehouse, that was more of like a frontline type of thing. Like I had to deal with that a little bit more. Never to this extent. Like I said, it was, you had to have a membership just to go in there. So it wasn't the same level of insanity by any stretch and truthfully like for that type of store at least i don't know what they do now it's been shit 20 years since i worked there or 15 years something like that it's been a long time at the time though like their sales and discounts weren't really sales or discounts they just kind of bundled a bunch of shit together and they didn't open till like 10 11 o'clock so you weren't really getting this like 4 a.m rush like they're or whatever it is that they're depicting in this movie i guess it's not 4 a.m because it happens on thanksgiving day it's like the night before yeah yeah so we never got anything like that, but it was always busier and crazier and all that type of shit. And this probably brings us to a good time to kind of take a step back and say, you know, we haven't even really said what this movie's about in our words. Should I do the like quick, you know, John Cliff Notes version of this? Yeah, why the hell not? All right. Before we get into that, let's take a short break and talk about the movie. Thanksgiving.
Hey, this is John, and I am excited to tell you about another exciting podcast that you can find on the You Run Podcast Network. Do you like spooky stuff? Then check out the Paranormal Misfits podcast. This podcast features your favorite besties diving fearlessly into the paranormal, uncovering mysterious phenomena, unraveling mind-bending conspiracies, and sharing their thoughts on all things horror. Head over to urunpodcast.com now and check out the Paranormal Misfits podcast, as well as all the other great shows on the You Run Podcast Network. Spy Wars Ahead, for who those who haven't seen this movie, it is still pretty new, and it is available to, I want to say this is still on Netflix. It I'm is on Netflix. Sure. Yeah, so you can, this is a super accessible movie. If you haven't seen this, definitely worth going to check before you listen to what we have to say, regardless of how we feel about it coming up. The story centers around with the owner of what is essentially a Walmart. They call it like Price Mart or something like that in this little town. And his daughter and her whole band of merry little dickwad teenagers go out on Thanksgiving night to participate in Black Friday. Things quickly escalate and essentially this angry mob, which I have no idea why they're this fucking angry, but this angry mob essentially ransacks a store, murders Gina Gershon in the process. And very shortly, it's like the most chaotic like Black Friday riot that you could try to encapsulate in about a five minute scene, complete with deaths and gore and all kinds of good stuff. This triggers a reaction from the killer, John Carver, who basically decides he's going to go get rid of everyone that was involved in making this viral video and like fantasizing, not fantasizing, but popularizing whatever this riot was that happened the year before. And the rest of the movie is essentially somewhere between a whodunit and a slasher. It's kind of got those, I don't want to go as far to say that it's got scream vibes because I don't think the story is crafted that well. Like, I think there's too many tells too early that tell you exactly who the killer is if you're paying attention. And the mystery part of it, well, we'll get to that. But it lies somewhere between a whodunit slasher and a what a whodunit and just a, a typical slasher movie, modernized. Very Scooby Doo esque. Yeah, but not as goofy. Yeah, definitely not as goofy. But like I felt that too. I like you said. I I felt like it was very scream, not to the extent of what it did and like who the characters are now, but like in like retrospect. But I felt like it it was very screamish. I appreciated that. And then to be fair, watching that movie, I didn't know who. And I was paying attention. Like, I truly was like, I thought it was Milo. I thought it was the dude from Zombies. I, I totally thought it was that little shithead. Yeah, lots of red herrings. I did pick up, the, like you said, John, kind of the scream feel, but it almost felt like a, like a, I know what you did last summer kind of vibe too a little bit. It was just scream light. Yeah, I don't, yeah, scream light or like. But heavier gore. And I don't know if, I don't know what it was that kind of gave that vibe. Maybe it's the cast. Maybe it was just how the they disappeared on, on the edge. But I wanted to say this whole intro scene, this riot where all where these people die, where these people die, has this very strong, like, final destination feel to it to me. Like the guy getting trampled under the door. He's a security guard is like, it's a glass door and the glass breaks and everybody rushes in and the frame like falls on him and he, he gets cut or something. I like the guy who gets the chunk of glass in his neck and he still runs to get a waffle iron. So it's got like comedic elements to it, you know, so it is played for laughs and it's that dark Eli Roth kind of humor to it. It very much feels like a, a Roth movie, but I just it's just something about it just felt like Final Destination for some reason, like these people were going to die reg regardless of what what actually happened. Gina Gershon gets her head rammed by between like two shopping carts, you know, and part of her dead <laughs> her scalp comes off. It's just this whole ridiculous, ridiculous thing. I did laugh, though, and I didn't feel bad about it. I laughed and grabbed a lot of body parts. Because, like, I, I've said this before when we talk slashers, when things happen, I'm just like, oh, my God, like, the stuff for flesh coming <laughs> off of her scalp. It's so gross. <laughs> and then and that glass chunk, like, because that shit just spurts right out. It's ridiculous. But it's, I mean, I, I thought it was a bit opening. I liked it. Well, and I think that's making you feel the gore to an extent is one of the things that Eli Roth does really well, for better or worse. Not just in this movie, but in general. Like, when, no, uh, and I'm saying this with all due respect to the Terrifier Queen here, no one smashes a, a head open quite like Eli Roth. Like, there's something just more crunchy and gooey and I don't want to say real. I've never smashed a head, thankfully, and I hope I never do. Have to. Yeah. But there's something about it that just feels a little, like it hits a little closer to home for some reason when it's in an Eli Roth movie when you compare it to like, we'll say, a Wes Craven movie. Like, it just 
it notches up that like intensity just a little bit. And that's one of the things that he he really does quite well. It's a little more visceral. Yes. So with that in mind, we've covered the opening of this movie quite extensively. What are some of the other things that we like in this movie? Jordana, let's start with you. So I really like the progression of the story. I like how he had stalker elements to it. Like, for instance, when they're at the diner and they're all talking and then like she looks out and he's in his pico and it's just him with the mask. I just loved it. Very reminiscent of Halloween to me or like like an older slasher. I really like the deaths in this movie. A lot of the death scenes in particular the parade. I loved that scene so much. How about you, Sean? I think to follow up and kind of piggyback off what Jordana said, I feel like the kills are really very imaginative for the most part. I would say like my favorite, there's, it's one of the first ones. The woman that actually, the woman involved with smashing the head is working at the diner and she is closing up for the night or whatever. And she's kind of walking out the back and she's been terrorized actually inside by Carver. And she's walking out the back and she's trying to get away and she's trying to get her car keys or whatever because he leaves her alone for like three seconds. Well, surprise he's in her car and she's like fumbling around for her keys and he gets the thing started and essentially rams her into this dumpster <laughs> into this dumpster where she's trying to crawl in to get away but it has a metal lid so it slams down on her and cuts her cuts her in two and he takes the the bottom part of her body i think the store is called like right way or something because the family is w-r-i-g-h-t and the store is r-i-g-h-t and he sits her ass like her leg, the bottom half of her on top of the star or the A or whatever. And that's like how the police find her body or half of it, I guess, because the rest of it, he's setting up this whole live stream. It's got this Instagram. It's got this, you know, this social media feel to it. It adds a little bit of modernity to this whole, you know, old school slasher or 90s style slasher, I guess, like scream style slasher. But I just thought that the kills were really imaginative. And we kind of touched on it. The the whodunitness of this makes it feel not just like a regular old run of the mill slasher, but there's actually like suspense because you mentioned and I read after the fact some of the things that you can kind of read into it to be like, oh, yeah, it was specifically this person. You can tell kind of early and actually the original trailer and how they redid the trailer I read, it kind of gives that away. But I won't I won't go into detail on that in case you haven't seen it. But I just felt like there's this real palpable suspense that's going on. And you're like, who's next? How are they going to get them? You know, there's some kind of jump scary stuff, but it's not it doesn't rely on jump scares either. I mean, I wasn't terrified watching it, but it, it it had some good some good moments to it for sure some good kind of scary things that happened that just come out of nowhere and they I don't know if it's like to be credited to Eli Roth, but whoever just really we talk about all the time ratchets up the tension, ratchets up the tension and gets you on the edge of your seat. And sometimes it's this kind of tease and sometimes it's it pays off. And when it pays off either way, both times, it's it's just fun. Yes. I want to piggyback on the diner and the chick in the diner. As great as her death is, I almost think it's even more gnarly what happens to her before she dies when he dunks her in the water and then slaps her into the freezer yeah. <laughs> because that's what one of those things yeah that's one of those things it's like and sean probably knows this like when i see fingernails getting pulled out or something like that's the stuff that really like you know the me and that was one of those things like oh god i don't know that that would actually rip your face off quite like that i feel like that's probably a bit of a intentional overreaction but god that, that looks fucking painful what she's stupid but one thing i really like about how they decided to do this since they decided to modernize the look of this movie which i i don't like that part but i like how they brought technology into this movie how they you know a common thing that you could always say with pretty much any movie is like wow they just got on the phone wow they just call the cops blah 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 blah, blah all that type of bullshit well obviously calling the cops will only go so far but i like that they make the social media aspect of it the cell phone aspect of it they don't just make it relevant to the story they make it a tool in the story to actually make these characters more terrorized by the fact that they have those technologies as opposed to using them as a for lack of better wording a get out of jail free card it's maybe it's not a good thing because it's like i'm sure there's some sick person out there who's like that's a good idea i'm gonna do that <laughs> you know so maybe it's not the best for that but on the other hand it's like all right you wrote something in that actually makes sense would be like not so fictitious that it wouldn't like play in the real world and it does kind of add to that intensity and kind of take out one of those easy to pick apart tropes so is there anything else we need to talk about on the love side before we kind of switch gears on it i was gonna say i just like the way that this movie has these social commentaries in it without really beating you over the head with it you know the whole social media thing people people you know the the, the killer 
Carver will just, he goes after somebody, he kills them, he puts them around this big Thanksgiving table. And that's like the motif of, you know, he's going, he's get, inviting everybody to dinner, essentially. But I think it's it's funny and kind of appropriate, but n- maybe not realistic, where he'll kill somebody and he'll position their body, their head or whatever piece of, you know, body that he, whatever's going on the table. Yeah, whatever's, yeah, whatever's going to be seated. And he'll post it on social media and it'll have like hundreds of likes. <laughs> yeah. I could see that happening. I could really see that happening. Very believable. I'll I'll add one more thing that I like that he didn't kill the cat and he came back and said it and then he gave him a little tap tap and I fucking loved it. And I also enjoyed that kill and the whole cat and mouse scene with the security or was it the security guard? Yeah, he's a security guard that ran away like a bitch. And little pussy. Yeah. Yeah. I almost feel like he's the most innocent person that dies in this movie because anyone who has ever worked in retail, which I feel like the majority of people have had, whether it's retail or like a restaurant job, you've probably done one of them and you realize how shitty people can be in general, especially when they're in a group in the public. He's kind of the guy like up until he dies in the movie. He's the guy I'm like, yeah, that guy makes sense. If I saw that kind of riot come in, I'd be like, fuck this. I quit and I'd leave too because there is no way that that dude gets paid whatever it would t- take to pay a guy enough to make him be like, yeah, I need to get trampled and get my face smashed with a shopping cart. And all. like it just him just piecing out on the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, that's the most believable part of this entire film. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it in that entire scene, that first riot scene. Shit's not going to be good. It's, <laughs> you don't have to be there to know that's not a good scene. You know, nothing good is going to come out of this. So, yeah, it seems he's like the everyman, but, you know, with a very small part. He doesn't fare too well either. Well, if we're going to get the hate train moving, I'm going to kick us off because this is the thing that this is where my biggest gripe with this movie is. And I don't know if anyone's going to agree with this or not. I hate the way this movie looks. And a lot of this is based off the original 2007 trailer. And one of the things that all of the Grindhouse movies did before this is they made them look like old shitty Grindhouse movies. And I know it's just a filter where they're adding in little like cigarette burns and stuff on the film or they're scratching it or whatever. But that look for this movie, arguably more than any of the other ones, would have made this feel like such a better throwback slasher. You just made this like a grimy movie that looks like it was dragged through the dirt and like no one wanted to release this, but we did anyway. And now you get to watch all this. It would have made the kills look better because the kills in this movie, for the most part, look pretty good. There's a couple where CG kind of takes over, th- the dumpster being one of them, for example. But just adding that layer of grime and filth and making, if you gave it the grindhouse treatment like we got with Planet Terror, like we got with Death Proof and Machete and, and so on, and Hobo with a Shotgun, which looks like shit and isn't a great movie that came out of this. I feel like that would have pushed this, like, we're not doing the point scale thing anymore, but if we were, that would have added like two points on it just for that, because it would have made me feel like I was in the same. There's a part of my head that feels like the Grindhouse movies, and I say that originated from these first two, all live in their own little universe and their own little world, and they all look like shit, and they all have the same kind of feel to it. And this totally breaks out of that. And that, you can maybe say that's my own fault for expecting something before I got it, but it does take a lot away from this movie for me. I'm just shocked that he didn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it was like on brand and on point with like the trailer and like where it was. So to like give it this crisp, clean feel, I feel that. Like I, I I Mm. wanted the same. I was like, oh, but I kind of after I watched it, liked it, and maybe it wouldn't have fit. I don't know. Like I would, it it, maybe I don't know. But I I, there's always room for trash. I, I have a dissenting opinion. I don't think that I don't have any reverence for this movie based on it being a trailer in another movie. So I feel like if they would have done the scratchy shit and the burns on the thing and, you know, the dust and the all that light leaks and all that crap on the thing, it wouldn't have fit because this is not like Grindhouse to me is a 70s and early 80s thing. So with all the if it was not a modern horror movie, if it was that didn't take place in current day, if it was like a 70s and 80s thing, which I think Planet Terror and Death Proof are supposed to be in that time frame, right? No, they kill Osama Bin Laden in Planet Terror, so it can't be from there. I mean, I guess this is, you know, this maybe it's an alternate timeline where the world is all 
grimy all the time and shit. I, I hear where you're coming from with it, and you're not wrong. Like, Brian House, like, what you're thinking of is a 70s and 80s thing. Like, you're absolutely right. I, I completely agree with you on that. To me, like, and again, maybe I'm misinterpreting this. I thought the intention with the Grindhouse movies was to pay homage to that type of cinema and bring it back to a modern audience. So taking that kind of look and that kind of feel and doing everything but modernizing it while keeping it with that look and that vibe for me was a huge, like a humongous gigantic part of why I love that movie so much. It's not just this crazy story with these like characters and actors I like told by directors I like. It's also throwing back to something and kind of taking that old look. I mean, let's be real. Like Machete doesn't look like a movie from 1975. Like it just doesn't. But it does kind of give you that like grimy feel with it because they took the time to kind of do it right and kind of push it into that, you know, thought process. What elements of this movie do you feel outside of it not having a grimy filter on it feel like a grindhouse movie not a damn thing okay this feels a lot closer to a you you said it yourself actually like when you said this feels like it's in the final destination universe yeah that is very much so how it feels to me like it's in that what would that be early to mid 2000s yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, a lot of blue tones, a lot of like, granted, it's like dark, rainy, like, but daylight type, you know, murder scenes and stuff like that. And when it's like not dark and like rainy and blue tones, it's these super sepia tones that like kind of bleed through with it. It feels, it feels like what it is. It's a movie from 2023 or whatever that is, you know, looks like that, which is fine. But it took for me, and again, maybe it's because I do have that nostalgia or that reverence for the rest of them. It took me out of that universe. And that was the one thing that I really wanted to do. Like, I would have been fine if this was a much shittier movie and looked shittier and I could enjoy that with it than it being well produced and looking good. Like, I don't I don't need another well produced, good looking horror movie because I usually don't like those. Give me the shitty B. Yeah, I like it. The shittier, the better. Sean, you of all people should let know that. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, but my point was <laughs> essentially what you restated. Like, it doesn't really have any grindhouse. Is it gory? Sure. Grindhouse movies yeah. are gory, but Grindhouse movies also didn't have CG. Well, right. You know, they didn't have cell phones because that wasn't a thing. So it doesn't feel error appropriate to be Grindhouse. So I guess just going, kind of going back to your dislike, and I'm not, you know, obviously like whatever you want. You can be wrong. That's fine. You, it's not the first time. But, you know, I just don't feel like it's, it just, w I, I feel like it wouldn't have fit if it had all that, the filtering stuff on it. Even, even if you watch the original trailer, the scenes that they recreate from the original trailer to put into this movie, and I, and again, you can't take a teenager from a, or whoever's playing a teenager in a 2007 movie and have them play the same teenager as that same age in 2023. That probably won't work. Mm. But even the scenes that they recreate for that, and the two big ones is the girl on the trampoline and the parade. They both look dramatically better in the original trailer. And that's why I started this by saying, if you haven't seen the original trailer, the one that came out in 2007, I strongly recommend that you go check it out because it might kind of make sense of why I see this movie differently than what I have a feeling both of you do. Well, I feel like if this movie was done in 2010, like three years mm -hmm. after, you know, it came out and we did the Grindhouse yeah. back to it. And because like technology, the was it where it's at obviously today, it would have fit a lot better. And I think we would have appreciated it a lot sooner than what we got because we waited quite a bit for this. You know what I mean? Here's my argument against that. Terrifier 2. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Well, you make good You make good points. But like, and then I see like Sean's point of like, it doesn't really like fit in the route. So like. Sean's wrong all I'm, the fucking time. I'm too. glad Jordana is here to be our referee. <laughs> <laughs> she can set the score. Right. right. Anyone else want to go on something that they were bothered by with this movie? Was is anyone else hot and bothered? As per usual, my things are all nitpicky and they're not really dislikes. Like I could say I didn't hate the mask. I actually quite liked it, even though it's pretty derivative of other masks that we. I wish seen. you would have kept the burned one on longer. I thought that one looked really cool. Yeah, that was cool. I liked when it got a little crispy. But, you know, just like the trank darts, uh, one of the big weapons seems at some point seems to be a trank dart and it just instantly knocks people out, you know, like, oh. stuff like that. Kathleen, when she gets roasted, I couldn't sit still like if I was being trying to pretend I was a out and someone's brushing butter on my face, I'm flinching. I'm I'm not. That's not a dislike. But she wouldn't have her her thigh meat would not be white. That's not white meat. <laughs> So just nitpicky, stupid shit like that. The turkey, the turkey costume, he puts a head on it. 
but the 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 window for him to see out is in the neck. Okay. There's like when he's walking in the parade, hey everybody, you know, it's just like why would you do yeah. But you wouldn't you would knock the head off and you wouldn't cut the dude if you hit him with an axe like they do in the movie. So it's two swings, not one swing. You're chopping a tree down. Yeah. Can't chop a tree down with one swing. That's right. But yeah, just nitpicky stuff. I was really pleasantly surprised by the movie just in general. I really did not I didn't expect to not like it. So I don't want to put it out. I don't want that to be like the the um the headline or anything. Sean expects to not like movie because you know that could be a lot of headlines a lot of movies but i was i was really pleasantly surprised basically really... every whenever it's not in march or it's not a ninja month that's most weeks <laughs> that's not true i was just really <laughs> surprised at how much like because i'm not a big eli roth fan i don't particularly like the movies that he's been in and i don't particularly like the movies necessarily that he's made like i haven't gone out of my way to watch him and i know for me like my opinion of eli roth for a long time was just like oh he's the torture porn guy because he made the hostile movies right so i was like well that stinks gonna live on that guy for a long ass time for me but yeah i was just really surprised in general that i I actually not tipping my hand too much, but was like entertained, quite entertained with the movie. Now, off to the same, like just like nitpicky about small things, but like the CGI, I was surprised because it's Julia Roth. I thought it'd be a little bit more practical esque and like less CGI looking. The dumpster. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, Sean. Like, I really enjoyed this movie. I just thought it was fun. At the end, I think that could have been tightened up just a tiny little. This coming from the tech I clean the love two and a half hour and days. <laughs> but I don't know. I just feel like with these ones, when they're to the point and they don't go off course and they're all crazy, like that's when it's best. And it gets to the point and it's kind of like, da, 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 da. but really don't do too much to complain about. I really like movie. What's your favorite kill? Ooh, I really enjoy the whole parade scene when the guy gets the cord through his head. Just like the whole sequence. I wasn't expecting it. And audibly, I was like, holy shit. I think it was just such a cool event. But I also like the corn cob. It's a silly scene in the whole movie and it is great. So it's fair. It's like silly, but did you guys feel a certain way like after she hits the the, the blade and he's holding her and he's like, what do, Jessica, what do I do? And like it, it turns from like funny to like... Like, I felt bad for him at first second because I'm like, dude, her fucking insides are hanging out. And there's nothing that you can do. So I like that scene because it starts with the corn cobs. And I think 90 percent of other movies would say the corn cobs are what killed. You know, they would probably show her hit the ground and then, you know, she's off screen and that's it. That's not what happens here. Like that's, you know, in Eli Roth born, he takes it like 50 times further than that. And it is a very... It's a very meaty scene. We'll leave it at that, is what it ends up with. It gets very chunky. So I will say, as much as I hate these characters and everyone involved in this scene is pretty much a dickhead, like I don't really feel bad that they're getting killed, but they do a pretty good job of actually, like, credit to the actors on that, like, especially the kid who's her boyfriend or whatever. Like, like you said, him saying, What do I do? Like, he almost comes off like he's in shock and, like, he clearly seems to realize, like, she's fucked. But, you know, <laughs> it's a fair question. Like, I, again, hopefully I'm not in that like situation. I don't want to be in any situation in this movie, quite frankly. But I mean, that seems like a fair response to just be like, what the fuck now? It, it was just such a shift because everyone's just kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. my God. And you see it and you're just like, you know, all of the gore. And then like when you hear it in his voice and they're just standing there and then like it cuts to her on the couch and she's just like, you know, blank, just staring. Like I felt that because that the type of that's how I would be like fucking disbelief and shock. Like, I know. And it, it made me feel weird because I was like, oh, that's a cool sequence. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> womp, womp. How about you, Sean? I just feel oh. like the, well, before the kill part, I feel like the movie does a really good job of, even though at the beginning of this movie, yeah, all these characters are despicable through and through. I mean, like I said, they're, it's capitalism at its finest. They're painted to be these characters that are just shit bags, right? It's like the, the ruthless store owner that doesn't give a fuck and he just wants to make a, a dollar, you know, and all this shit. And the teenagers who are teenagers, dickhead teenagers, how teenagers are. I mean, they don't have any empathy for anyone else but by the time people start getting kind of picked off or they start to realize the gravity and that they're actually being hunted they start to kind of be a little bit you, you become a little bit more sympathetic to maybe to them or they become a little bit less shitty i mean john's shaking his head fuck them kids fuck them kids but i do feel like you kind of for me like i kind of forgot that they were so shitty at the beginning 
And yeah, the one dude, I don't remember his name, the one football player, the the white guy with the dark hair, Addison Ray's boyfriend. That's like all, only all I can think of his name, but he was like still the only character. Is that Lonnie? Yeah, that makes sense. Lonnie? Lonnie. Or maybe Evan? I don't know. It's mm. one of these two guys with dark hair. Anyway. But, but he was really the only guy that I was still like, oh yeah, that guy can die. It's fine. But the rest of them, you kind of felt like <laughs> Scuba, you know, the, the boyfriend holding Yulia. Yeah, you start to, you feel bad for them. They're, they're, they're hanging on, they're sticking around. They're actually like realizing maybe we didn't do a good thing. Like maybe we did a bad thing and maybe we're paying for it now. You feel the regret in some of them, at least. The self-realizing. Yeah. Be a right. Kill me. You fucking help people. Yeah. And I think to go back to your question about the kills, then I think my favorite's the dumpster, but I do like Jordana mentioned it in the parade when the board, the mast or whatever, the mast from the, the boat that they're hauling a, a parade float and it like hits a sudden stop or they run into something and the, the boat mast goes right through the guy's face. And I love, I don't, I mean, it's, it's gross, but it's funny. And the kids, his grandkids are in the car and they're just like, grandpa, oh no. Favorite part about that is after they do that, they cut to the grandpa and then they cut back them and then he starts squirting blood on them. They get to look at it for a little bit first. I have a real sick sense of humor. So I, f I found that to be hilarious. Like that was just icing on the cake for me. That was that was a good move. But yeah, I think those two are probably my favorite. I think the, like I mentioned earlier, the turkey, when they cook a person in, in a big oven, that's like, oof, that's really gross. But it was also well done. <laughs> no pun intended. I love it. When he pulled the mask off, there was something about that that part that kind of gave me like, ooh, like, like goosebumps. Like I was like, oh, because the way that he moved it so slow and then you see like the half charred face, it just felt like a, like a huge slasher moment. Like when Michael gets his mask or like, Jason get you know what I mean like when you just realize that that pure evil yeah, it's like a transformation or something but to John's point earlier it's they didn't use it quite long enough you know these masks are like a plenty so they're all over the place and he's it's just got this stack which I thought was a cool kind of effect to have but it would have been nice to see the chart mask a little longer so for me and I agree with Jordana that the parade is what does it it is the turkey in the parade that because it's so ridiculous and so funny how it happens and not to bring up the trailer again but I like that the there's no clown in the trailer because talk about giving yourself away. Like this clown is the most like obvious, like, well, there's your fucking killer right there. Like you don't even, honestly, this clown walking around in a parade, like even if there wasn't a killer on the loose and the cops shot him on sight, I'd be like, yeah, that's probably fair. So like, he looks like a dick, but just the like pop up nature of it. And then just heads off and then, you know, chaos ensues from there. It's a pretty entertaining scene in a really fucked up way. And I mean, we all have to deal with holidays and really what's better than inserting a little bit of chaos on a holiday in a, in a fictitious setting, not in a real life setting. It, it works. Am I missing anything? Do we have anything we want to cover before we start wrapping up and talking about, you know, end thoughts on this one? Sean? I'm good. Sean, how do you feel about the clown in this movie? I mean, I was thinking when you were talking about the clown, like how many clowns do you see in Thanksgiving Day parades? Unless, like I know the Detroit one here. I think the mascot like a handful of them, yeah. Is well, there's that too, the Jack in the Box clown thing. Yeah, but they usually have like wouldn't recommend several that I didn't say I would recommend it. I'm just saying there's usually several of them like walking around like throwing shit at kids, throwing shit like feces at kids. Hey, maybe it's art. You, that's what art does. <laughs> if you've got a ma if you look like this clown, because this is just an off clown. He's almost like a killer clown from outer space kind of clown. He looks like a killer clown from outer space type of clown. <laughs> that's not. You're not going to see that in a Thanksgiving parade. I don't feel like. I didn't. I didn't like it. It, but you know, I knew he was up to no good, fucking clown. He emerged. I was like, uh oh, <laughs> that's not a good clown. That's a bad clown. I thought they were all bad clowns. There, except for Krusty. We like Krusty. Yes. What about Bozo? Bozo the clowns. Fuck Bozo. I prefer Eric the clown. Eric puts out a fire with his big shoe. So let's start with Jordana. You're our guest. We thank you so much for being here. How do you? Wh what's your thought and your verdict on? Oh wait, we have a little jingle or something, don't we, Sean? What time is it, John? What time is it? I don't know. Then you're in for a big treat, bro, because it's hot dog time. Anyway, it's hot dog time. The girl's fired up. It's warmed up and ready to go. Jordana, kick us off. How do we feel about Thanksgiving? My hot dog ranking is plentiful, as any Thanksgiving should be. And I'm 
And I'm going with an 8.5 because I just think it's so good. And I'm really excited for the sequel because we are getting a sequel. So I'm excited to see where he takes it this time. But overall, it, it definitely it delivered and gave me the slasher substance that I needed in 2023. And it filled up my tank. And I, we, we just watched it not too long ago. It's going to be a, a staple, like pretty much right after Halloween, first like week of November. We'll be watching it. Sean? Who's hot dog is this? Huh? Is it yours? Man. Nah. So I'm going to say for me, I'm, I'll start off saying I didn't see the original trailer. I think that's been well established as we've been recording this thing. I, I haven't seen it, so I didn't see have any real preconceived notions as to what the movie was originally supposed to be about as a big broad term. I don't think it probably went that deep into it, but I'm, I, I just hadn't ever seen it. I, I'm not usually a fan of what Eli Roth does, but I have to say, like I said earlier, I really enjoyed it. I felt like it was a cross, like we've mentioned before, of a lot of different kind of whodunits. A lot of different 90s slashers or early 2000s, like I know he did last summer or Scream specifically. I don't know. I couldn't, again, couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was. Maybe it's the young cast or like the cat and mouse that kind of goes around between them. But like I said, the characters weren't particularly likable at the beginning of the movie and they weren't really all that likable at the end. But I felt like I was rooting for him a little bit. I maybe so much to see what the actual final, like the final destination for, again, I'm full of puns today. I didn't like, I just so we could get to the end of the journey. Okay. I just wanted to see who the guy was because I had my suspicions, but a, as any good whodunit does, you don't know who it is until you know who it is. And they just kept up with the twists and the turns all the way through this thing, all the way to the up until the end. And even when I thought I had it figured out, I didn't have it figured out. So this year, there will be no leftovers. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you see it. I would say see it again if you have seen it. Thanksgiving, because John took away the numbers from me. I will just say it gets a full hot dog from me. Whose hot dog is this? Huh? Is it yours? I can't take hot dogs away from anyone. That's you do whatever you want. No, nope. you're the evil person that, yep, you're the fucking Grinch. You took away my hot dog. The Grinch who sold hot dogs? Yep. <laughs> you know what? That sounds about right. <laughs> I would still watch them. He's a big <laughs> hot so dog good. colored Just a shrubby guy in a green like furry suit running around stealing hot dogs from people and saying, fuck you and Mustard shoving stains, them in his face. Ketchup stains all over his hands. His fur. They, Nasty. I don't know why we don't, why don't we write me? Um, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I agree that this is absolutely a movie that not only should you watch, you should probably just go ahead and start adding it into the rotation every year. There aren't a ton of Thanksgiving-based horror movies, and there are even less good Thanksgiving, well, I guess good is all perception, but of quality Thanksgiving-based horror movies, and this one does deliver on that. I, I find all the characters to be flat-out fucking hateable, but they pretty much all, you know, there's another review that I read that said, when you introduce like 20 characters in the first five minutes, you know it's going to be a good slasher movie. I was like, it's a pretty good point. You know, there's going to be a lot of people getting, you know, torn up in one way or another. So it delivers on that. It delivers on the blood and the gore and all that type of stuff that you want to see in this kind of movie. And it still feels like an Eli Roth movie without making you feel like, uh, it's an Eli Roth movie at the same time. So it it does kind of, you know, check all those boxes. It still leaves me personally a little disappointed. And I've heard other people say it too. So I don't think I'm entirely alone with that. But it doesn't necessarily take away from the fact that this is still a pretty well-made and entertaining film for what it is. And I need to just shut up and be like, you know what? It's fine. I give this movie a salad, like, you know, have a hot dog and then go pop it in and watch. I know what you did last Thanksgiving. Be a lot better if we had those hot dogs. Would it? Because I think people already figured out that we want you to watch this movie before we got to this point. Would have been nice to have the hot dogs. Do you want to give a hot dog scale? Nope. Go ahead. I, know, I didn't write. I didn't, I didn't come up it. with a hot dog number. I'm that person that's with like a couple that argues and they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> Happens sometimes. So. We had a goddamn lot now. <laughs> Slink away off the edge of the screen. Homer at the bush. <laughs> And just think, we invited you on for this. I love it. Well, good. That's what we're here for. That's a pretty resounding all around positive, like overall for this. Again, this movie's on Netflix right now. Go check it out. Put it on this year. Don't do it while the lines are on, but do it while the Cowboys are on because fuck the Cowboys. No one on this call likes the fucking Cowboys. So when those dipshits are on, put this on. We didn't do question of the week this week because we tend to go long when we have people with us, but we have the best person with us and Jordana, you are the best of people. So please take some time. Tell everyone where they can find you find your shows plug everything that you want to plug again 
and we want to make sure everyone is checking out what you have and we'll start wrapping up here. Oh, I would just want to say I appreciate you both so much. I'm so happy that we got to hang out. It's been time uh, that we got to do this um, and thank you for having me on. And you can find Pre-Killer Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I'm here on Instagram mostly all the time. YouTube, again, I don't think I'm going to be on X for very long. Yeah. And then the terrifying three, you can find us on the same platforms and same with Future Creatures DTF. Please do follow Jordana. Links for everywhere that you can find her will be in the notes for this show, along with, I'm assuming, the original trailer for this and some other stuff always in the notes. But for us, you can find us at Dewey Pod Monster. We are on every social network except for X because fuck those guys, but we're on all the rest of them. So please hit us up there. You can give us feedback. Let us know what other movies you would like us to talk about or other topics. It doesn't have to be a movie, TV show. It could be porn. could be a book. Well, probably not a book where I'm not going to read. Whatever you want us to talk about. You can also find all of our previous episodes at crap.town. That is our site. You can leave us feedback on there as well. Uh, you can go to urunpodcast.com where all of our previous episodes and future episodes live, as well as all the other great shows on the Urun Podcast Network. And Sean, what have, what have I left out? Well, normally we have a question of the week. And like John said, we didn't have one this week. But if you wanted your answer read on the show, you could leave a response on the question of the week that John asks on the social media because uh, we probably he would probably read it horribly and I'd laugh and it'd be fun. So we'd all have a good time. Other than that, if you want to uh, check out anything that we talked about on, on today's show, especially follow Jordana on, on and any of her links, we're going to have it all in the show notes. Sometimes in the show notes, we put links to the stuff we talked about, like movies or TV shows or whatever. Sometimes there are affiliate links. And sometimes if you click them and you buy something, we get like a buck after you spend like five gazillion dollars. And like I said, Jeff Bezos flies around the world and he fucks bitches and maybe he'll fill up his private jet and we'll get a dollar. Maybe a dollar will fall out of it. So that'd be pretty cool because you know, that's the best way you can support the show is by buying stuff on some other third party site. And maybe, you know, this fucked economy, maybe we'll get a dollar out of it. This is the best way that I've ever heard you end this show. Yeah. So other than that, if you want to find my Michigan Craft Beer Adventures, you can find me at youtube.drafttherapy.com or you can follow me on all the social media and I can spread cheer like this all over your fucking face at uh, Draft Therapy. <laughs> That's it. There's no way we're topping that. So you have yourself a great Thanksgiving. We'll be back for, the, for some more consumerism next week because Christmas is coming. Happy fucking Thanksgiving. Blah, blah.